Okay, we've got all the holes drilled now for our transformers, and I have decided I'm going to go ahead and punch most of the holes in this before I start mounting stuff. Sometimes I like to mount the transformers, but this time I think I'm just going to, it's such a small uh, chassis, I think it makes more sense to punch all the holes in it first. So, the next thing we're going to do is start working on the back panel. And on the back panel, we don't have a lot of things, but we are going to have the power connector. And this is probably one of the most kind of pain in the butt things to mount in the chassis. I try to mount these as low in the chassis as I can. The center one is the ground lug that's going to be grounded to the chassis and we're going to be drilling a hole probably in this back panel to run the ground lug over to the chassis for the uh, safety ground off the three wire plug then the the hot and the neutral are going to go the I believe on this deal that's the hot and yep it's marked that's the hot that's the neutral so the two power ones are going to be over on this side which is good because we want to run them along this we're going to run the power twisted along here up to the front switch so those over on that side make sense we also did the power transformer where the two heater wires are on this side because we're going to tuck them in this upper corner and run them over and across and then to the two tubes so it made sense to put the heater windings that have the most current and really are the wires that are going to cause the most uh, the, the biggest chance of having hum in the amplifier is the heater wiring so the closer we can keep it to the corners and away from any of the other wiring the less likely we are to have any sort of hum in the amplifier when we're done. So, nobody likes to chase hum, so I kind of overkill making sure we don't have any. To punch out the power thing, we I have a green lead punch that is a 1 and 3 sixteenths, which is right at the distance between here and here on this socket. So we can punch out the majority of this material with one round hole. They make square punches. They're insanely expensive from what I've seen. If you don't want to buy a big chassis punch for this one thing, you can drill four holes in the corner and then use something like the saw to saw out the square and then finish it up with a Dremel tool. I'm going to punch a hole in it with this punch and then finish it off with the Dremel tool to get the shape I need for this to drop into the chassis. I like these because it is a fuse holder and the power connector in one. They make these that are the power switch two, which then you have all three things in one little block. But I like having the power switch on the front or on the side where you don't have to reach behind the amp. But if you want to use one that's got a switch in it, that'll save you some wiring and a step of running a thing around to the front. So we're going to put this as low in the chassis as we can so I'm going to want to put this, need to make sure I get it over far enough where I've got room to get to these nuts on the back side. So you don't want to cram it over too far because you'll never be able to get in here to hold the nut on the back side to tighten it up. So this will right here be just about centered over the transformer too, which will give it some symmetry. So. We want it about right there. And then 
this edge you don't you want to leave a little bit here to keep the strength in this back panel so we want to punch a hole right about there so let me find my little screwdriver and push down and make a hole or make a mark where I want the center of this to be which will be right there so the next thing we do is we need to I've got to find my punch there it is okay these are kind of tricky to do what I usually do is hold like that to support the metal and got a nice indention right there where I'm going to drill the hole. So I've got to drill, I'm going to have to drill a hole big enough for this big bolt. And so first we want to drill a smaller pilot hole to start with. You never want to drill with the final giant drill size when you're drilling a big hole. And we'll drill that. Like that. Then we need to find the right drill bit for this hole. And you want this this the hole where this bolt that pulls it through to be fairly snug so it holds it centered in the right place as you're pulling the anvil through the die. So let's see if this hole okay we got the hole drilled for the center of our chassis punch and we're ready to pull the hole through this punch what you want to do to protect the surface of this powder coating is you need to put a piece of paper between the die and the actual uh, powder coating so it, it doesn't bar it up. Another word, word for my mistake, don't make it yourself. So, get a, you just need a single sheet of paper. You put the die, put it through the hole. Then on the inside you want to pull the anvil into the die so you screw screw this down until you you feel it make contact then wiggle a little bit as you're doing final snug up again i'm using the chassis punches that have this ball bearing washer on it it really makes it a lot easier to turn there's a lot less friction and it helps keep it from bending up the chassis as you're pulling this through because it does take quite a bit of force to pull these punches through this steel chassis and then you just do like this and keep turning it around And you can feel it cutting. There's one pop, and then you'll hear the second one. And it's punched the hole. As you can see, it's a perfectly round hole. You might need to get the little round file and smooth off the edges of that if you were going to be using it as a round hole. But now we have to cut it square like this. And so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to get my carbide burrs and 
gonna pick out probably this little cylindrical round one like this and put it in my Dremel tool and I'm not gonna bore you watching me do this but I'm gonna mark this whole square and then cut this out. Before I do the turn off the camera to go deal with that. I'm going to show you how I mark these holes for the speaker jacks that are going to be on the back of the amp. And one of the things you need to be aware of is it, it comes in pieces like this. And so this little washer has to sit flat up against the metal. And you might not be able to see, but there's a, there's a lip in here that you don't want this washer to, to be on top of where this is welded right here. So you want to get the your calipers and measure from the outside to where that little folded over lip is on the inside. And it's right at 1.1 millimeters. So then you want to come over onto this side and get this washer and space this over 1.1 millimeters at least and maybe give it a little fudge over and mark the center from this edge. Now most of my amps I put the speaker jacks on 34 millimeter centers and that way when I go to swap the amps out they're the spacing between the speaker terminals are the same. And then from this bottom edge, I just 19 millimeters seem like a good distance to put it from the edge. So once you mark this first hole, you go over 34 millimeters and do a little mark like this, then a little mark like that. And get the vertical mark and then you come back at 19 millimeters from this edge and mark the center so that these are all exactly the same distance from this edge and they're 34 millimeters apart and if you look at where they'll line up under the output transformers that's pretty ideal because then these wires will just go to one speaker and the other, one speaker lead and the other. So I'm going to drill these holes out and I'm going to finish up squaring this thing off and we'll come back and I'll show you how to mark for the RCA jacks that we're going to put on this end and figure out where we're going to put the volume control and then the last hole that we need to put in the chassis is going to be where the tubes and tube sockets themselves are going to be. I'm still waiting for my push button power switch that should be here in the next few days. So I'm not sure exactly what size hole I need to put here for that. But that's not a big deal to do later. And then we can start bolting all the iron down, get the sockets in, start wiring up some of this uh, tube sock or the speaker jacks and start getting the wiring done and then we'll we'll figure out how we're going to lay out the wiring and the components on the inside after we get all that part done so i'm going to go do a little bit of work off camera and when i come back i'll show you where we are at, at that point 